Bada bada boom. <laughs> What's going on, brother? What's what going is on, man? Cracking? That's <laughs> right. My brother from another mother, Rob from Entertainment Talk Nation, is back in the heezy in the movie dojo, hanging out with the fat samurai guy. Gonna be talking some strange things, some things that be strange up in here. Season four. Uh, volume one we're going to get into it and th- remember everybody watching right now thank you for joining us and hanging out with us tonight but this will be some spoiler talk we're going to get into it and uh but first uh we got to do the roll call now we got to get the roll call hold on let me get the banners up in here boy kasha all right roll call jad in the house what's going on brother good to see you lady danish john martinez oh what's up, john shit. who else we got up here uh jake hall in the house Keep forward productions. Let's go. What's up, brother? Good to see you, my friend. Oh shit. And Jake Hall X Bone 89. There we go. Jonathan the sexy sumo. <laughs> bada bada rock is there. Sexy sumo, Jonathan Hanky, my favorite uh Hawaiian. <laughs> there you go. Uh, who else we got here? Uh Kevin in the house. What's going on? Cash box. And Ethan, what's going, what's going on, on everybody? Uh, thanks for hanging out tonight and uh, chilling with us as we talk a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of horror, a little bit of comedy as we get into Stranger Things, volume volume one, season four. Now should I know, be strange. Oh, yes, it should be strange <laughs> when you're strange. So yeah, so I know everybody, some of you who do not know are a little bit confused with the thumbnail. Uh, that I made for this video where at the bottom it says, welcome back, fat samurai guy. And there is a reason why that's there. Is because samurai guy gave up. I was done. That was it. I didn't give a shit. I didn't care. I moved <laughs> on with life. I said, fuck strange things, okay? I don't give a shit. All right, they released the first two on Blu-ray with the cool badass VHS uh, artwork and the cover. Samurai guy paid his money for that, but did they continue with that for season three? No. So fuck <laughs> Stranger Things. All right, but, but Rob pulled him back into the upside down. <laughs> you did. You did kick me off the cliff. I was on the edge. I was yep. on the edge, and then you kicked me off. But yeah, season one was uh was was phenomenal. It was a great, pleasant surprise. Didn't see it coming. And season two was entertaining. And then I I was done. There was too there's too long of gaps between, and I just kind of lost yeah. interest. A lot of people interest. said that. A lot of people said that. Yeah, I lost interest, and then uh, to the point where, you know, fans that were still in love with the show, I was kind of getting annoyed. You know, I was just like, he's changing thing. Yeah. You know, and I was just like, really, like, n- I never saw myself going back to it. But yeah, Rob, Rob had to, you know, lead me, lead me to the cliff and tell me to look that way. And he gave me the good elbow and knocked me off. <laughs> he convinced me because I know it wasn't Rob. an elbow. It was a standing drop kick to your back. And you just <laughs> tipped right over. <laughs> <laughs> so Samurai guy said, all right, you know what? Fuck it. And I went and binged season three all the way into season four and wow that's all i have to say is wow after that i jumped online and i started talking to uh fans the stranger things community and i was talking a little bit back and forth and talk about things i enjoyed and talking about that i was done with the show and a lot of them kept telling me welcome back (laughs) so now you know that why that's in the in the thumbnail of the video uh, but yeah, man, Rob, hey, you didn't leave me astray, brother. Told you. <laughs> told you. Told you. But it hey, wasn't hey. Moon Knight. It wasn't Moon Knight. Oh, Jesus. Don't get me started on that shit. <laughs> Don't get me started. Between that and Obi-Wan, you know, I'm, I lose hope with shows, but then I see Stranger <laughs> Things. I see shows like Reacher and Night Sky. And yeah, yeah. I started yeah. watching Warrior. Very good. Yeah. Nice, very good nice. so nice. how far did you get oh i'm only on the first episode because it was oh, during okay, the week okay. but once i get to the, but i liked it the first it's episode was really bro. good it i like how they real quick i like how they sure. transition to show you that even though you see them talking english they're actually talking chinese yeah i like yeah. the way they did that so yeah, yeah. it's good shit man it's gonna get even crazier <laughs> kids are going to bed 
the rom <laughs> the rom army here. The ar- yep. Uh, oh, Jay Skull. Thanks again, brother, for the super chat. This is Big Rob and Fred Summer guy. Can't get any better than this. Legit, son. Thank you. Thank Too you. Too legit to quit. Uh oh. Hammer time. Right. <laughs> 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 Everyone, all the younglings are now all going hammer. Yeah. Or are you talking about Thor? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like what? Mjolnir? Oh my goodness, Mjolnir. <laughs> but yeah, let's have Hi, some buddy. fun, and we're gonna. Uh, bounce around a little bit and uh, talk about each episode. Oh, look at that. Love the beard, Rob. Check that oh, out. Oh, thank you. I know. It looked messy. I looked at my video. I was like, why did I record a video looking like this? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I, I, I'm right behind you, man. I'm right I mean, behind it was you. sticking out on the sides, and I'm like, <laughs> this is like my first set of videos back, and I look like trash. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, you hear that laughing in the background? Yeah, my yeah, wife yeah, is yeah. the one that dyed my beard. Okay, uh-huh. I spent about a good two hours in the shower with ink dripping out of my beard. <laughs> she dumped a whole package on this shit. I'm <laughs> well, she, hey, hey, to she her credit, she got all of it. She did. She got every. <laughs> she she even got some of my face, and I'm there like, you know, it was funny. <laughs> but yeah, man, let's go ahead and jump into this really quick. Oh uh, yeah. Season one. So before uh, those who who have not seen the sh- uh, season three, Robbie, want to give a, a quick bootleg fast recap of what was going on in season three. Leading yeah. So season three was uh, obviously the my flare again. The big the big takeaway there was toward, at the end of the, of the season, they're trying to close the gate, and we believe that Hopper to be dead. Billy was a big character in season three, which was Max's brother, stepbrother, if mm-hmm. you will. Um, and the guy who played, I forget the guy, the actor's name, but very, very good job. And um, he was like the culprit. He was like the uh, the catalyst for the mind flayer in, in the yeah. show. Yeah. And um, yeah, big set piece at the end in the mall with that the was whole, fun. yeah, the kids dumb singing the never ending story, Dustin and his girlfriend. <laughs> uh, that. <laughs> they, didn't need to, they didn't need to sing almost the entire song. You know, yeah, I think it was a little the crazy. First first um, and uh, <laughs> I would say I would say Billy was the highlight of that season because it wasn't the strongest season of the three up to this point. And between that season and, and the gap, like you mentioned, I was also falling off. Okay. Um, oh, OK. I didn't know that. All but right. not as not as much as you. I, I came back and I'm like, you know, once you invest in a show for so long, it's like you got to come back and watch. The only show I never did that with was The Walking Dead because they just went too far. They went too long. I just completely right. lost interest in The Walking Dead after a while. But um, this this season completely turned it around. I mean, they have done shit this season that I even was like, whoa, this, this is scaring the shit out of me. Like, you know? Yeah, it was like, it was almost like true horror. It was. There were some parts that were... return. Yeah. Um, you get, I mean, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with the young ones, there's going to be, there's going to be comedy and then there's going to be, you know, some cringe roll your eyes moments, but that comes with the territory. But overall, man... This was a fantastic season four, and I, I I probably reacted just like you did. Like I was not expecting, I was kind of expecting more of the same, really. Yeah, uh, it, it is not. Uh, I mean, it's the same theme, obviously, but in terms of execution, yeah. they really ramped it up. And I think a lot of that has to do with the kids getting older. They can do mm-hmm. those sort of things now. Um, kind of reminds me of like the Harry Potter series. Like the first two movies were very kiddie. I and mean, once you get to the third Harry. Yeah, once you get the prisoner of Azkaban and you go forward, it gets really dark. You yeah. know, this show's kind of the same. Like, yeah, it was always horror, like what happened to Barbara in season one, those kinds of things. Right. But right, right. it it wasn't as out there as it was this season. This season, like some of those deaths were brutal. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I, I just I, I I love David Arbor, bro. Yeah, he's so he's, he's really such good. a great actor, man. That guy. I and, love his um, character. The guy that they bought in for season four who played the guard, um, uh-huh. I don't remember his real name, but he was from Game of Thrones. He played uh, Jack of Hood, uh He played the the assassin that was training um, Arya Stark. Uh, oh, Jacka okay. Hajo, something like that. Okay. I, I wish I could remember his name, but he, he was great as the Russian guard. I love him. He's a good actor, that guy. Uh, I thought he looked familiar. That's yeah, right. yeah. He okay, played okay. he played the the assassin from uh, 
Yeah. Well, the um, whatever they call that group, I don't remember. It's been so long since I watched Game of Thrones, but uh-huh. uh, you know the guy with the mustache that was yeah, always yeah. kind of telling Arya Stark, yeah, yeah, he he was the Russian guards, and he's great. He was great. He was, and his dynamic with uh, uh, David Arbor's character, Jim, was, yeah, uh, was great. Yeah, Jim uh, Hopper. Yep. But yeah, I mean, the, the end of third season ends with the big battle throwdown. In the in the midst of that, um, like you said, Billy dies. Yes, uh, which affects his, his sister big time in this uh, season, um, and also during that climatic battle, uh, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, <laughs> Eleven, uh, can't use her powers anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's she's pulling a she's pulling a, a Toby Maguire, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> really, really felt for her this season, especially in the early episodes. Oh, it's, it's called. See- Welcome to high school. Welcome to the real world, man. Yeah, uh, some of that was, yeah. but you know, it's funny. And now that you've seen the show, I can actually bitch about this because this was my biggest. And I, I get this feeling that they are going in this direction. Mm. But why is Will not standing up for her? You know mm. what I'm saying? I've like, always, I've always liked Will. I felt sorry for Will. Yeah, because he's just he was the one possessed. He was the one going through all this shit. But he was kind of the character was kind of annoying me this time because I'm like, dude, I get it. You're not a fighter, but do something. Don't just stand there. Well, I think <laughs> every I time th- she was getting tortured, bro. Like every time she was yeah. getting tortured from the high school students. And here's and what pissed me off is that hello, this chick literally saved your life in season one. Yeah, like she saved your life multiple times. Multiple times, yeah. You directly, not just the group. You directly. She put her ass on the line. Can you step out there and at least get harassed with her? You yeah. know what I mean. So that was kind of pissing me off. But I also think that they're kind. I, I think the signs are there that he's going to be a gay character. Well, he's got Mike on his mind. Yeah, and he's not even, he's not even thinking about eleven. <laughs> he's got, yeah. If that was Mike getting fucked with, oh, he probably would have went in there and fucked some dudes up. Now, motherfucker, that's my man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I was like, I, I was getting a little frustrated with Will, though. Uh, I mean, he, towards the end of the season, he actually starts doing stuff. Yeah. Er, earlier, I was just like, ah, do something. But yeah, first episode right here. Uh, the Hellfire uh, Club. One, the Hellfire, Hellfire Club. And all you uh, comic book junkies, uh, that term should sound familiar, those words. Yeah. Uh, so still reeling from the events of last year, the gang tries to move on with their lives. However, a threat is brewing both on Earth and the upside down. Uh, man, what did you think of the very beginning? Before you before you don't before you eventually you find out what really happened. What did you think about the beginning, man? Um, I thought I, I, I felt a little bit um, when they showed that again knowing that we already had an idea of what happened, mm-hmm. I said to myself, I, I kind of already was like, okay, there must be there's more to something. It. Yeah, there's something okay. significant. Because here's the thing. They've already portrayed her as a hero. So I've always thought to myself in the back of my mind, all right, did she really kill all those people, though? Because, I mean, can we really call her a hero? So when they called back to that, I said to myself, okay, there must be something more that they're not that they're going to tell us as the season progresses. I'm sure enough, they did. Um, I mean, she's still, whenever we saw her kill people on screen after she joined the boys, it was always in self-defense, which is fine. Like when people were chasing her and she'd go like Mm -hmm. this and snap their neck. Yeah. But that was outright murder. (laughs) In the is outright murder. (laughs) So I always wondered in the back of my head, like, what? Like, all right, I'm cool with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did kill a bunch of people. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. them setting that up in the beginning, we now know. And I love the CGI was passable. You know what I mean? Um, when they it was her. weird. We've seen yeah. worse. We've seen yeah, worse. Yeah, we have seen worse as Luke yeah. Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, all the kids have moved on. I think it's been a year later since the last season, I believe. And yeah, uh, the kids are big now. You know, you know, eleven and the big deal about season three was eleven is trying to get out. She wants freedom. She wants to experience things in life and go to the mall. But with come with that comes responsibility. Yep. And running into real life with high school is a good. That's just it. Just sucks. It's like yeah. I think it sucks for everybody. You know what's funny is that in a way high school never ends. Yeah. In a way, 
<laughs> in some in a weird small ways. way. Yeah. When you go to work at jobs or work here, there's these clicks. It's, it's, it's like there's a more, these, it's, yeah. It's weird. It's like a matured version of immaturity. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's, it's perfect. really, yeah. It's really odd. <laughs> I believe me. I, I know what you're talking about. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Um, my favorite character of this season is uh, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's you know, a little crazy. You know what's you know what's funny about char- characters like Eddie, the whole nerd group, the Hellfire Club, which is which is the more badass. Way. Hey, we're they're playing D and D, but they don't want to call it D and D. But right? the, here's the thing, you know, I grew up in the '80s, man. Those yeah. guys wouldn't have been viewed as nerds, even if they played D and D. They just didn't look really that. I mean, I, nerds in the '80s were straight glasses and. Right, pocket right, put right. pocket pencils and you know what I mean like right. they were a little too cool to be nerds but it's it's all good <laughs> yeah 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 well I guess they were kind of outcasts and sometimes outcasts, outcasts I think is a good word yeah yeah outcasts can be lumped in with the nerds yeah that's true so so samurai guy in high school the, these are the guys I hung out with <laughs> yeah I, I, hung I, out, I hung out with the metalheads uh, the, the the goth kids the nerds. Uh, yeah, that was my, there was no, you know, Mr. Popular, you know, kids hanging out with Samurai Guy. That yeah, I, thing. I tethered, tethered the line between the jocks because I played football. Yeah, guys I, I play football with, I was friends Yeah, with but I guys. also hung out with the geeks because I like playing mm-hmm. D&D. Yeah. So, and it was great because my teammates would be like, yo, are you fucking hanging out with the nerds? I'm like, yo, you got a problem with D&D? And they just <laughs> step down. It's like, I mean, I'm benching 400 pounds in high school. These yeah. motherfuckers. So, yeah, it's funny because the say? nerd, the yeah, the nerds that hung out with me were completely like safe. You know, right, right, it's right, like they right, were part right. of the cool gang by proxy. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna introduce Eddie, and you can already yeah. see the 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 click, the original click of boys. You know, they're growing up. They have different interests. Yep. Uh, we have what you call uh, Lucas. He's he's trying to play basketball, be on the team. He's trying to be he's trying to be popular. Yep. Uh, you know, and it's it's teenage teenage angst. All that stuff's happening. However, there is balance within the force, yeah. or oh, the more dark side here. When we are introduced to who is this, Rob? Vecna. Vecna. Dude, I love the look of this guy. I love he, the way he is moves. a scary I motherfucker. He, I love the way he talks. I love the design of him. Kind of reminds me, it's like a mixture. Have you ever seen the movie called The Keep? Yeah. No, I can't say that I have. Not that many people have seen that movie. But the, the entity that's in The Keep, uh, he kind of reminds me of that. And let's throw, in, let's throw in a little bit of Swamp Thing in there. We're going for the thumbs. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> definitely has a Swamp Thing vibe going, but much scarier. Uh yeah, but people are uh it's not looking good. Oh my god, that part. Yeah, it's not looking good, man. Dude, Teen- teenagers are getting fucked up around town. Let me let me tell you. Yeah, go ahead. I kind of shit on horror movies these days because they just don't impress me and you know, stuff like that. Yeah. This was the first time I've seen something like this, like mm-hmm. hard that made me look away when her bones started snapping. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, it freaked me out. I was like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. Like literally and just sucking the life out of her. Yeah. Eddie said it was like someone on the inside was pulling her. Pulling her apart. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Yeah, that scene was oh freaked me out. But this was an important scene, not just to show the first really big brutal kill, but uh from Vecna. But uh Eddie, you know, he's he usually doesn't hang out with the popular kids, but you know, she wanted some of the, some strong weed. Because she feels like she's slowly losing her mind, but Eddie doesn't really know that. He just wants to sell her some stuff. So after the death, the big death, of course, you know, <laughs> levitating and bones breaking, of course, the guy, of course, Eddie's going to freak out. Anybody would freak out. They're like, what the hell did I just see? And he ran away. And so, yeah. And then we and had a witch hunt basically after that. Oh my God, that poor kid. But yeah. the, the great thing about it is I see that in the show and I think everybody would agree parallels to not only a nightmare on elm street Mm -hmm. but the ring because it's very similar to how they died in the ring um the the face like "Eh." mouth open yeah Yeah, but um great great parallels that they chose here i love when when this is a, a sign of good writing when you film a scene that directly calls 
to another movie, another tradition, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's still original. It, it's just yeah. perfection. Like you see, I saw this and I'm like, oh my god, this is reminds me of Nightmare on Elm Street because she's going yeah. through crazy shit in her head. But when mm-hmm. you see her in real, in the real, she's just standing there, and at the same time, you know, like I said, you get that feeling of Nightmare on Elm Street, but at the same time, it's still very original. And um and yeah. I you know they yeah. purposely went for that because obviously we got Robert England in the show as a yes. cameo much who later, ki- but we'll who, get to who, that. Yeah, who killed it? Uh, but yeah, that I really enjoyed the soundtrack of this season too. And some parts of the soundtrack was was sounding like Nightmare on Elm Street uh, to me. Some of the soundtrack was sounding like a little bit of Candyman too. And yeah. it's funny when I re when I watch season three just to kind of catch up. You know, they they show Day of the Dead and, and footage in in the movie theater and stuff like that. But then later in that in the in the show, I was hearing music from Day of the Dead being used in scenes. Right. And I was like, wow. <laughs> like that was kind of cool. Yeah. There's probably other job. music in there that I missed. Uh oh, I'm uh, sure. All kinds of Easter eggs and stuff like that. It's a lot of content this season. Like you're getting, I mean, this was about let me see, what was it, seven episodes? Or yeah. Yeah. And you, I mean, I would say you got about 10 episodes worth of content because some of these episodes were over an hour. Right, right, for sure, for sure. All right, let's keep it rock and rolling. Episode two, a plane brings Mike to California and a dead body brings Hawkins to a halt. Nancy goes looking for leads. A shaken Eddie tells the gang, uh, whoops, and it cuts off there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so now we have uh, everybody coming to visit. And uh, poor Will over there, he feeling like the third wheel. What do you what do you, what do you think about this guy, the stoner guy? He was funny. I liked him. He, he was like a little bit too convincing. He reminds me of uh, <laughs> it, it was actually this guy really me. high. Yeah, I know, right? He he reminded me a lot of uh, what was that character from Fast Times at Ridgemont High that oh, Sean, Sean Penn, Penn played? Sean yeah. Penn's character, yeah, reminded me a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard other people say the same thing. And again, this is just good writing, right? You, you're calling, yeah. you're you're paying homage to some of the classics of the '80s with your own original characters. And why uh, he was he was hilarious. Why did the girl that he ended up liking later, which samurai guy totally would have went for too, by the way? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but the guy he liked, I mean, the girl he liked later. Why did she look like what you call from Breakfast Club? She did, didn't I she? I wonder if that. I wonder if that was on purpose too. Yeah, I know. The dark, the dark goth one. The re- yeah. Yes, so exactly. I'm kind of laughing at that. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, let's keep it going here. This was my one of my favorite parts of the episode. Yeah, I was very proud of Eleven for this. Oh, I love um, this. Oh I don't, I don't, I don't. But you know, look, I hated I the understand. outcome. I hated the outcome, but I didn't like the outcome either. I thought the outcome was a well. I mean, it's a show, so I, I shouldn't use the word realistic. But people were like that though. Oh, why? I mean, at least Why did Will you do that I, again. Will should have backed. He said, "Look, I don't like that you did that, but I completely get it." And she did ask for it, yeah. you know. Like, and they're there, and I don't believe like the whole cuffing her and all that and sending her to jail. That's a little ext- extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can see that happening today, not in the '80s. I right, mean, I, right, I've right. got into some scuffles worse than that, and I didn't go to jail. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. They, they deserved it. They they, they humiliated did. eleven. They I mean, and the humiliation her. was excessive. Yeah, it was. I like mean, it was really excessive. excessive. It, I mean, it was so hurt. Like, and the idea that everybody in the skating rink was just laughing at her. Nobody had any ounce of sympathy for her. And it, it just it really time. it really like got me like I, I you know yeah you really got under my show. skin like I yeah. fell for her. Yeah, and eleven grabbed her roller skate and said. Hey, bitch, turn around, clock. That was great. Oh, I love I was cheering. And then yeah. Mike's and then Mike's dumbass running up. Why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, like, like what do you what do you shut up, do? Mike? Yeah, but to be fair to him, he doesn't know what's going know, on because he's been he's I been know. lying to her. She's been lying to him. I'm just um and that's, my frustration at the scene. No, I know it, it is like that. Like, but but he didn't do anything either. Like, that's your girlfriend. There's people in the middle of the floor embarrassing her. Yeah. Get your ass in there, grab her by the hand, and pull her out of the situation. And just leave. You know, I don't expect you to go in there and beat everybody's ass. You can't do that. You know, you're not capable. But get her out of the situation. So I can understand why she she gave the cold shoulder for a while. Completely understood. You don't understand it. I mean, he's like, he's like, oh, Jay. uh," And I'm like, really? You're just going to stand there and yell her name? You're not going to roll up in there and just pick her up and get her the fuck out of there? 
all he did, all he did was turn off the music. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. He did. Wow, that's really gonna do a lot. <laughs> turn off the music. Oh, oh, I would have went in there and punched the dude who had the camera. Yeah, but uh, I would I would have <laughs> taken the camera and cracked him on the head, and then I would have just picked up the eleven and just bounced. Like, yo, we don't yeah. need this. And then, yeah, fuck this, we out. you know. But it's funny because they show how even though she's still ha- is socially awkward, yeah. she's still a kid in that. She does right. what a lot of kids do in that situation. They lie. They they try to make things better because yeah. they don't want other people to worry about them. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So and and she's yes, she's wrong for that. But at the same time, again, you could understand why she's doing that. Yeah. But I really felt for her. It really got under my skin the way they were treating her. It's like, wow, this is excessive bullying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she gets uh, arrested, taken away. Then she meets up with Paul Reiser from Aliens. Uh, he shows up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, kind of cuts her a deal. He's like, look, hey, don't worry about the, the charges. We got you now. And uh, we got you. Come with me. Let's get your powers back. You know, because something yeah. is coming to Hawkins. Hawkins is cursed. Something is coming and everybody is fucked. We need you. Let's, I like him. In, I like him in this show. His, mm-hmm. his character. I really do. Yeah. Um, a, ve- a real uh distance from his character in uh aliens yeah. where he's a complete fucking prick yeah. he's just a prick in that movie he, he is so good at that part he like, is he's he, great he's just like yeah you know, he's so good at that part but uh so you have the military trying to investigate these murders the military's hunting 11 yes. at the same time riser and matthew modine's agents are protecting 11 and trying to keep it on the hush hush and so they show up at uh, the house, you know, at this point, uh, you know, David Arbor, you know, unfortunately you think he died at the end of season three, but he ends up, he ended up surviving, but he, the Russians got a hold of him. He's been tortured. Poor guy. He's been in a Russian prison this whole time. So, uh, he sends information to, you said the Russian guard, uh, and, uh, who gives that to information to Joyce and Joyce and Paul Giamatti, uh, end up going <laughs> to, uh, Paul Giamatti, they end up going this the second, end up going to Russia to cut a deal and uh, try to get Arbor Harbor uh, character Jim out of prison. So that's where we at. We are with that. But I enjoyed the visuals, bro. I don't know why this time around the upside down was so much more interesting looking. Yeah, in this season uh, than before, so much more interesting looking. Looks more more realistic. They did a good job with yeah, that. Yeah. Instead of just dark fog and you don't know what's out there, you know, now you're seeing everything, you know, <laughs> you're seeing everything. Uh, but yeah, our boy Vecna still doing his thing, still fucking up with other teenagers. Yeah. And, and this is where the story starts to unfold that this is not isolated to, it's not because at first you thought the girl had some special powers, kind of like 11 which right. is why she's linking to the upside down. But yeah. this episode, you realize that he is targeting certain kids that have like almost a guilt. It's almost yeah. like their guilt is their weakness and it makes them <clears throat> able to tap into them. And yeah. um, so when that happened with that kid with the glasses, I'm like, yo, what did this kid do? And you find out that he caused a car accident where someone died and he kind of ran off right. Um, right, and, right? and got away essentially with a manslaughter. I won't say murder because murder is intent. Manslaughter is without and uh he just wrecks his kid <laughs> it's just yeah. in the middle of the street like yeah no fucks given we're just gonna crack you right here <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much he, he it, it, it did not go well for him but um i was gonna thank you kevin i can talk about it now i was gonna wait later but dude i've noticed since season three up to four the action scene the action scenes the set pieces the fighting yeah, we're it's getting ramped getting, up and got bigger and better. I mean, we yeah, had it's been one ramping dude, up a lot. The one Russian dude was like Terminator in season three. <laughs> that dude was like Terminator, man. Oh, shout out. Rest in peace, Alexi, by the way. Uh, rest in peace, Alexi, the character of Alexi. Do you remember Alexi? He was the, the scientist they broke out, and he, he was one of the glasses. He was trying to help them, and he ended up getting shot when they were. Oh, the right, right. That's yeah. right. Yes, yes. That sucked, dude. I was like, no. Yeah. No. Took me a while to remember that because that was a while ago. I haven't seen season three since it first came yeah, out. Yeah. R.I.P. Alexi. Uh, AK yeah, he was the one they were trying to protect, right? They were trying to get information from him and protect him. 
Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, and he was trying to help them out to turn off the machine. Yeah, he ended up getting uh, hit. Uh, but yeah, the action scenes themselves bigger, better, more well done to the point where the shootout, <laughs> the, the, the military <laughs> invades the house and the agents are there trying to protect the kids. Dude, that was shot in all one take, bro. Yeah, that that, that was impressive. What's funny about that too is that these agents before that are just chilling, being lazy fucks, right? Yeah. You know, he's doing the recliner, ordering pizza. So the yeah, one agent yeah. gets popped right out the gate. So I'm thinking, all right, the other agent's going to get popped too. He was MVP. Dude. That dude MVP. Was like he, I mean, he got, and it makes makes me feel good because he was a little on the chubby side. He was a bit yeah. of a chungus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it makes me feel good because, you know, it's usually the the, the skinny, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. this guy was a bit of a chungus, had, had right. one too many wings, but he right. wrecked it. <laughs> I mean, dude. these guys were coming from everywhere, and he was pop- with a handgun, dude. With a handgun, yeah, just yeah, popping yeah. them. Yeah, that was that was very unexpected. I'm sitting here watching a Stranger Things show, and we had a one take action shootout done right. I was like, "What is happening?" Yeah, and the even camera later- rotation during that was great. <laughs> yeah, even later in the, uh, the when uh, David Arbor's character Jim was trying to escape the fight in the shed, bro. That fight in that shed, that was like beat down, man. You could feel the hits. I was like, mm-hmm. dude, what's going on here? Yeah. So I was enjoying all of that. Uh, Steve, is that the Paul Giamatti the second? Is that Steve? No, uh, Steve is the the teenage guy that hangs out with the gay girl. Uh, the guy you were, because he does look oh, a little okay. like Paul Giamatti, but his character's name is Murray. Murray, thank you, Murray, Murray. Yeah, Murray, he makes me laugh too sometimes. Yeah, he's good. I like him. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, it. that, that, yeah, he, he's uh, out of nowhere. He, Flash his karate skills. <laughs> it's a, that was a little silly, but I accepted it because it was funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's let's keep on going. So now we have our guys here. They're you know they they can't stay in the house. They got to go off doing their own uh, uh, investigations and whatnot. But then yeah, let's go ahead and and go to episode three here. So Murray and Joyce fly to Alaska, and L faces serious consequences. Robin and Nancy dig up dirt on Hawkins demons. Yes, so they kind of fake their identity and sneak in there so they can talk to the man that they feel is going to help them because his whole family died, but he survived. So they think he knows something, Yeah, but he kind of doesn't really. He had some information for them, but yeah, let's talk about uh, the mystery here or the, 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 the tragedy, actually. Yeah, regarding Victor Creel, who yeah. is... The lone survivor of, I, and I like again, once again, a very good parallel to the Amityville horror. Oh yeah, in this for one, sure, love that, love that. Uh, Amityville horror is pretty scary. The old school one, not the one with Ryan Reynolds. Um, just want to make that clear. <laughs> I, seen, I didn't even bother watching it. I, I mean, I was there was a time I was obsessed with the Amityville horror to the point that when I still lived in New York, a bunch of me and my friends drove down mm. to to go view the house. It was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, pretty pretty creepy. That's cool. Um yeah. Uh I mean again, these and these episodes were long, so it it since I've watched it like two weeks ago when it came out, um, I forget which incidents happened from one episode to the next. But um yeah, they they the two girls disguise themselves to go in and get and actually talk to Victor Creel directly. And um what a I scene. immediately yeah, I immediately knew it was Robert England. He's just got that face that you know. <laughs> the side it was it was a side shot silhouette, and you still could tell it was Robert. Yep. <laughs> yep. But killed it. He oh my god, he did such a fantastic job. I mean, this man is just an incredible actor. It's almost a sin to me that he was typecast as because he, he did great as Freddie, but he could have done he has done. I mean, he did V as well. He played a more passive character there, but he, he I mean, he does crazy so good. He really oh, yeah. does. And if he, I've seen him in dramatic roles where he did very well, like did a good job, but they were always like small parts, you know. But like co-starring, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's he's great, and he killed it. You know, 
he he had to take his eyes out, <laughs> his own eyes out. Yeah, that was how he dealt with. And the and the makeup on that was so good. Like I, those oh, couple yeah. times I had to look away. Like, oh, that's fucking gross. He, he had to. That's how he dealt with the demon, you know, that killed his whole family. And that's how we kind of went with the story at the time. But yeah, we're starting later. we're starting to get little clues here. As to, we're starting to unravel things mm-hmm. very slowly. Uh, but yeah. again, I say slow, not as a bad thing. It was a very good pace. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, con- yeah. Considering how many episodes there were and how long they were, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. they did an extra. I mean, they did a really good job. They they chose a lot of good um, classic 80s horror to parallel mm-hmm. and inspired by. Yeah. When you look at, yeah. like I said, when you look at, obviously, Nightmare on Elm Street, the Amity O'Hara, uh, a little bit of the 90s stuff with uh, The Ring, if I'm not mistaken, it was The Ring in the 90s or the early 2000s. Um, but it was a little bit of ring in there as well. Um, yeah, for early 2000s. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. just great, great stuff. And I, I have to say, man, kudos to being able to take that stuff and use it as an inspiration, but still make your own original horror. Right. And this, uh, this to where was, to where it's not references, references. Yeah, it's not a reference Re- or references? a direct. Yeah, or direct like biting <laughs> off of it. You know what I mean. <laughs> Um, References the show, yeah, it's not. That. Yeah, yeah, only just this good stuff. But um, yeah, so the girls manage to get whatever information they could. Mm-hmm. They make it out of there before the cops come, so they don't get arrested. And uh, they do during their whole big investigation. They do learn a lot. Right. And um, this is where we find out the clue about the music. There, I, there it is. There it is. That was the main thing. Because remember, he, at the end of their conversation with him, he laid down and he started humming a song. Right. And that's when they figured out and uh, perfect timing, of course, because Max was about to get croaked um, Mm -hmm. and they managed to save Max. Max was about to take it in the head from from Vecna Mm -hmm. and um, she managed to escape because the music brought her out of the out of the trance. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I really thought she was going to bite the dust because I said to myself, they got to raise they got to raise the stake. Someone's going to die. She should have. Or was that too much because a family member of hers just died in the last season? Yeah, looking back at it now, and after watching the full season, I think I get a pretty good idea of who's going to die this season. Okay. I, I, in fact, I think it's pretty obvious if you look closely who's going to get it. Well, who who's going to get it? I think it's going to be right. Steve. Steve. Yeah, and I, I, the reason I think so is because number one, I don't, I don't. This is the first time we've ever seen anything from the upside down without killing somebody, just bite them. Right. Right. I don't right, think those right. bites are going to be just regular bites because everything in the upside down is connected. Mm. And I think that's going to, he's going to be somewhat like almost poisoned by that. The other reason I think it's going to be him is because suddenly they're showing flashbacks of the connection he had with Nancy. And oh, okay. I don't expect Nancy and Jonathan to separate, but I expect Steve to get so much sympathy for the fact that he still loves her that I think he's going to die and it, it, either he's going to die saving Nancy or Nancy's yeah. going to have to put him down and mm-hmm. that's my guess I think and that'll be an impactful death because he's one of the most popular characters in the show so right, I think right. I think Steve's going to be the one to go and he was kind of showing it was it Nancy or Wendy was it was it Nancy the girl Nancy's he was a girl yeah like. yeah Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and she was showing a little bit of affection towards him as well without, you know, being disrespectful to her boyfriend. You know, like, they kind of just show you that there's still something there, even right. though they're not together. I mean, Steve has grown a lot from season one. Season one, he was a prick. You know what I mean? So so Steve will die, and she'll, she will go back to settling for Jonathan, basically. Well, no, I don't think she'll settle, because she, I think she genuinely loves Jonathan, but they have a history. And mm-hmm. because Jonathan's gone... You know, um, and Steve's now is, you know, we don't know anything yet, but he is obviously injured. And if you look at the new trailer for this last two episodes, um, they remain in the upside down and they kind of have to because right now Nancy's in that trance. Right. You know, but the the difference with her trance is Vecna is not doesn't seem to be right now. Going after yeah. her, he's almost kind of giving her information, which is weird. We'll probably find out why he's doing that. But I think this is where Steve is going to make his heroic effort to save her, and, and then he's going to kick the bucket. And hey, and it makes out, sense to me. That's going to like be a hero, hopefully. 
Oh, I, I hope so too. But yeah. that's going to be devastating. I think that's going to be a devastating death for people to swallow. But I, I think I think Something's the signs are there. Happen. Yeah, I think the signs are there, and yeah. it's going to be him. Um, my guess before that was originally eleven because I thought this was the last season, okay. but it's not. So she's not going to go because she's got to stay there for the till the end of the fight. So right. I think right. um, I think it's going to be you him. Think they would kill eleven. I think you have to at the you end of the season. So? I think so. Wow. You can't you can't go through this much war yeah. without some sort of trauma or death at the end. I mean, she's really young. Right. Uh, using the powers, I would think, have to take a toll on your body. You know what I mean? And if she's going to start expo- ex- like getting rid of so much power to fight these demons, because remember, she's dealing with Vecna now. The Mind Flayer yeah. is still out there. Right. Um. And even though they're ramping her power up, we don't know how that's going to have an effect on her body. Um, yeah. I, I can't see her having a happy ending. And right. I think also showing what she's going through this season is also a sign of of showing that she's not she's not made for this world, unfortunately. She did say something like and that. And she too, did right? say that. Yeah. yeah. She did. I don't belong here. And, yeah. you know, well, so. We, we, we will see. But we, yeah, we, got, we got time before that yeah, happens. Yeah, we so. got time. But meanwhile, Yuri. Yeah, Yuri. <laughs> That's the Yuri laugh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this guy was a character and a half, huh? <laughs> so he ends up screwing over Murray and Joyce and uh, getting them all kind of arrested until, uh, you know, what you call had to bust out the move, son. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. Like, oh, my God. That was great in the plane. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, very, very, in, yeah. Very interesting sequence. Um, where everything that happens from the time they get to Alaska all the way to Russia. Right. Uh, right, right. This is where we see uh, Jim Hopper, who's another great character in this show. Oh, yeah. Um, one of my favorites. And, oh, my God. The shit he had to go through to try and escape, like partially know, breaking dude. his foot. Oh, man. Just to get caught later. I know. What, what a frustration. Had, peanut butter for a minute there. Hannah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a lot of GIF. They love that shit out there, huh? Um, yeah, almost escaping. And then he gets thrown in the gulag where he's mm-hmm. him and a group of men have to fight. Uh, a, a classic from season one, the Demi Gorgon. Yeah, 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 for sure. Meanwhile, and, uh, uh, yep. our buds here are just continuing their inf- uh, investigation. And there, there it is. <laughs> yep, there's the man. <laughs> my hands are, sp- my fingers are spears. Good old Murray. Uh, meanwhile, Eleven's still dealing with trying to remember what was so important. It's almost like a memory, a memory she never really fully remembered. She keeps yeah, bouncing so around it. The trauma, so the trauma from what happened between her and, and Vecna before Vecna became a demon is that she locked it away uh you know uh some sort of post-traumatic stress syndrome where she locked away the memory yeah. but in order to get her powers back and become even more powerful she's gotta she's gotta go through that again and yep. uh we have matthew modine return yeah uh, i love matthew modine in this show he's great oh, he's a great actor yeah always sure. liked him as an actor um but yeah and it got to the point where even she was like all right fine yeah like she, she was, was about to bounce she was like yeah i'm out this is no yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, and and even Matthew Modine's like, you know, you're not ready. Yep. And she decides to go back and goes all in there. Yep. Doctor yeah. Brenner. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Last episode, we got a delay here. Hold on a second. Do you see the image? Yeah, I, I do. Why, I don't know why I can't see it. Can you read the it, plot it synopsis? Says, Behind the Iron Curtain, a risky rescue mission gets underway. The California crew seeks help from a hacker. Steve takes one for the team. So, right. yeah. So, yeah, this is the episode where things really start to unravel. Uh, you got the teenage boys. The, the guy is uh, pissed that his girlfriend died, thinks that uh, Eddie did it. Right. So there's a manhunt for this guy. He's been hiding mm-hmm. out. And um, this is where we see another kid. Uh, get this broken yeah. apart in the, on the inside in the lake. And uh, one thing we need to mention too, everybody I'm sure knows. So the story also is that every kid, every time Vecna kills someone in the real world, where they die, a new portal opens. Yeah. So that was interesting. Yeah. And, and that's the whole, that's his omission is that basically the mind flare is sending him out 
to do this so he can open different portals so the mind flayer can invade the real world and mm-hmm. and take over that's that's why dustin refers to the mind flayer as a five-star general you know mm-hmm. and he truly is like i can only imagine how they're going to up the ante on the mind flayer for season five because vecna is some I mean, he's wick he is a force to be reckoned with He's the best villain, I think, on the show. He is so far the best villain that's had because we have a face now. It's not just an entity. Right. A face yeah. and someone who who can relate to one of our beloved characters in Eleven. Mm-hmm. They're essentially brother and sister to, you know, like she was made from his DNA. And right. she was the only subject of all the kids to come out with powers identical to his. Mm-hmm. Um, the difference being is that you know that she's more powerful than him. It's just that those powers, A, are, have disappeared now, and B, they're not as honed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he did a great job. So, even before, so, you, yeah, before, you, before you say anything, I've been waiting this whole stream to, to say this. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to skip forward, and then I'm going to rewind back, go back to where we were. Go for it. I just, I just, I want to say this, and I want your opinion. Rob? Uh-huh. I think... Actually, let me see. How do I word this? Do you think it's too late to recast the Joker? <laughs> you know what? Because I this like is where who your head's I want. At. This is I, who I want. And I don't, yeah, I like where your head's at with that. Um, this guy, and I, I don't know his name. I gotta I have the it, list here, but it's, it's Jamie is his first name, Jamie. Jamie Campbell Bauer. Right, Henry Creel, one bro. Vecna. Yep, bro. I would. This is who I want as Joker. Just recast the other motherfucker. Recast uh, the other actor who we don't know who, what he's saying for the next th- Batman movie. This and he guy. Was in, he, he was in fucking makeup, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just this. This is who I want. Hashtag Jamie as the as the Joker. Jamie Campbell Bauer as the Joker. Yeah, he um it. he can definitely pull it pull it off, dude. Um, very good actor. Yeah. Phenomenal performance, Very good performance. Bro. Fully transformed his face to where I was like, "Did they CGI his forehead or something?" No, <laughs> like, he, the second there, I was his, like, "Did they his, enhance his face?" His and physical. Like, his, just, he's a great actor. Holy yeah, shit. his physical acting was intense. Holy like, shit! Like he was dude. into it. Yeah, I mean the way he contorted his face with. You know, like you could tell, like you know, when you do certain things to your face, you, the blood rushes, you get red. Yeah, I can only imagine how much Advil this motherfucker was taking, <laughs> just trying to do the scenes. But dude, sorry, I had to skip forward. No, no, that, no, I'm just, with you, man. That's that's Jamie as the Joker. Let's go, spread the word. Yeah, Recast. hashtag Recast. Jamie Campbell Bauer as Joker in the Batman Two. Yes, get it out there. Spread the word, guys. <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's rewind a little bit. I had to jump forward because I was completely blown away. Like, just give this guy the Oscar at this point. Um, yeah, he he did great. Um, but yeah, we again more very solid, entertaining action scenes, man. Yes, yeah, that they scene those wings, bro. That yeah, was pretty the, good. Uh, the demi bats. Yeah, he yeah. that was creepy when they were biting him. I was like, oh man. And then you see the close up wound, and they got a good chunk of him out. They kept going, yeah. Oh, um, I I was like, what the fuck? And then kudos to the whole crew for coming through the portal. Yeah. Cause I'll be real. All right. I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I would I'd be like, yo, you know what? Yo, he's my boy. You know, pour one out for the homies. I'm going home. I'm gonna watch uh it. You know? <laughs> so, but yeah. But even the, Eddie was throwing down. Like Eddie was like fighting. I was surprised that, that was well Eddie's better home. off in there. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think because yeah. they are, and let me tell you something. That teenage boy, I I don't remember his name, but yeah. you got the you know the basketball player kid that just is annoying as fuck. Um, he's radicalizing the town, and that oh, is yeah, scary. The town looking for him too. Yeah. Imagine you got the the you got the upside down doing their mm-hmm. thing about to about to infiltrate, and now you got the town spazzing out. Yeah. And it's gonna be some crazy shit going on in that town between they don't even, they don't even fuck about the cops. They don't even care. No, <laughs> no, that's the scary thing. The cops can't control the people. That kid radicalized all those people. Stay and, calm. Yep. So Eddie's just better off chilling there. Like just stay <laughs> he's there. Probably, he's probably he probably is. Uh but yeah, they continue their investigation. They figure out they figure out how to communicate with Dustin back and forth. 
and then yeah, Dustin tries to, that was pretty good with the nightlight. <laughs> dude, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, hold on, I'm I'm skipping around here. Uh, but yeah, I love how he stole the. Uh, they plan on stealing the lighter. I love the Last Supper scene. This was great. Yes, I agree. Um, what made this great was that you knew right away this was their Last Supper, and they didn't. Oh yeah. So you see them sitting there enjoying their meal, this and that, and and Hopper knew right away. He's like, "You motherfuckers, this is your life. You're fat. You're getting fattened up." You know what I mean? What do you think? Like this is the gulag, man. You're eating like this mm-hmm. for a reason. You're not expected to live. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, fun little action sequence again with the Demi Gorgon. Man, Demi Gorgon fucked him up fast. Fuck. I mean, I don't, I don't even know if they if the plan where they were supposed to stay together. I don't even know if that would have worked. No, nah, no, nah, <laughs> the, the Demi Gorgon. I mean, you know, it's funny because this is the most brutal that I've seen the Demi Gorgon in the show. You know, um, yeah. a lot of other times it was more stalky, and this one it came out like fucking like a superhero. It just and it was the way it was killing them was brutal. Just I mean, no nonsense. Brutal. Yeah, and and uh, obviously Hopper having experience knew that he needed that fire to keep it at yeah. bay because it doesn't like fire. And uh, right. they managed to escape, and he fe- he sees Joyce. J- you know, Joyce managed to find her way to him. And they've been reunited, but uh, based on the next trailer, they don't immediately leave Russia. We see that there's a lot of subjects from the Upside Down that are in a laboratory, maybe in the Gulag. Maybe they find a laboratory somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But there's some shit going on in Russia, and Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things. There's still a lot of question marks uh, as to, you know, we know there's a connection there. But now we're going to get to see probably just how deep that connection is with Russia because... I did not think they had that many sub. I just thought they had the, they had the demigorgon from when they caught Hopper and the demigorgon. They got him, and but no, yeah. they have their own portal and mm-hmm. they got a lot of shit there. Yeah. And um, but back to this scene, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how far these characters have come from yeah. the first season all the way to this season, and just. Even little Joyce, she's not a warrior. She's not a soldier. She's not a fighter, but she, she's there. She's Joyce is there. She's got Joyce has balls of steel. She's like, fuck it. I'm gonna. I might die, but fuck it. I gotta do something. Well, and yeah. I, I mean, she obviously was heartbroken when Hopper died, and knowing, even getting a hint that he might be alive, she was right on board. Uh, and right plus, on board. Before Hopper, she was dealing with Samwise Gamgee's death. Uh, yeah, yeah, three. poor Rudy. little Samwise. You know, he didn't, you know, this is one mountain he didn't make it to. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker got chewed up right from the gut, too. Oof. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just just really great writing. And, again, back to some really cool visuals. I love how they transported each other. Or they were trying to get the other kids through the upside down to back to uh, our realm, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, but, that, that whole concept was very cool. But like you said, uh, Nancy's still stuck. Who else is still stuck? Nancy and Steve? So Nancy was supposed to go second to last before Steve. And while we see Nancy climbing and then falling back into the upside down, back what's back. actually happening in the real world is that she yeah. went into a, a trance. Right. And uh, Steve's trying to wake her up. And that's pretty much where we left that. But right. in, in the upside down, she's interacting with Vecna. And Vecna's basically telling the story about his origin. Um, yeah. Look this at this was shit, good- bro. Yeah, I know that. Shit look looks at this, crazy. dude. This is fucking. Uh, this is fucking metal. I mean, look at look at this. Yeah, that's. But hardcore. now, yeah, let's get back to my favorite scene in the whole show. The, my my whole favorite sequence is this big, huge reveal because you you feel you know that he he always looked out for her. You know, they were friends, and then man, now did you did you did you think? He uh, was assuming she was going to help him get that chip out of his neck, or was that just a long shot? No, I think I think he knew that she could do it. Um, she was going to help him in her own way. Yeah, I, I think he, he. I think he. His plan was solid. Um, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility because he played down escaping with her, and she right. wanted him to come with her. And then he's right. like, "Well, I have this chip in me that's tracking me." When in actuality, it's a bomb. That basically, if he uses any of his powers, it's going to go off and kill him. So right. that's why he's not able to use the powers. Um, I will say that the reveal was one of the coolest things, but 
I wasn't shocked. I kind of knew that was going to happen. It was coming. Right, it was right, coming. Right, to, right. It was. They did such a good job. They did almost a too a much of a good job starting to bring all the elements together. You could put the pieces together before the actual reveal, but that yeah. doesn't take away the reveal because the story, I think the story of the reveal is really what's um, yeah. compelling, not the reveal itself. I think a lot of people might have figured it out before that. But now that you learn that he's almost like an X-Men, his power yeah. is natural. It's organic. It's not something that was grown in the lab. And... Um, when he when you find i think when you find out he was the one that he's the one this whole time that from from the childhood all the way to vecna massacred uh, a, everyone and, <laughs> kids and, and everyone and the amazing thing is <laughs> Crazy. this is a, another sign of good writing this is not something they just thought of for this season this has been planned because wow. some of these seeds were placed in season 1 oh, you know wow. what i mean if you, yeah cuz i started watching season 1 again Okay. And all right. There's certain little seeds that have been planted in season one that that directly connect to this. So another good sign of great writing, great nice. setup. Um, they had to stumble across the way, you know, with with season three and and a little bit in season two. But the bookends so far of this show, season four and season one, are ast- just astronomical. Um, and the amazing thing is, if you notice when she has that fight with him. Yeah. and pushes him into the upside down mm-hmm. it is because of him that the upside down transforms and parallels hawkins because right. it, it it didn't look like that when he got there you notice when he when he breaks through it's just another dimension and there's almost nothing there right but it becomes hawkins because of where the breach opened but imagine but here's a crazy thing I don't think people realize just how powerful Eleven is. This bitch literally opens portals into another dimension. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot more intimidating than the portal opener from Doctor Strange. But oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, she's not punching stars in the American sky. <laughs> but yeah, the big reveal uh, is the origins of Vecna. Uh, is this character? morphing into the Vecna that we know and man I can't wait to see what Vecna does and the ruckus that will be brought and the the rest of season four when it comes out and as you said uh season five is one more is planned right yeah they got season five is going to be the last season um and let's talk a little bit about the battle between Vecna and Eleven when she's actually younger yeah. You know, she's not even yeah. the 11 we know now. Right. She's actually like probably 11 or 10, mm-hmm. maybe nine. And I, it, it, even though you knew the outcome, when he lifted her in the air and you start seeing her bones contort, yeah. I'm like, oh, God, please, you know, don't, <laughs> don't break her bones. But she's flipped it on him and just she yeeted him into the wall. And yeah. then she pushed his ass into another dimension like, be out, son. <laughs> be oh, she, out. Fucked, she fucked him up. Yeah, For she sure. wrecked his ass. It was like scanners, except nobody's heads exploded. But, but uh, it it was almost like his advice to her was his own undoing, right? Because she remembered his advice. You know what? What did he say? You have to think of something sad and what was it? Anger and sadness helps. Uh, yeah, create helps. powers or something right. like that. Right. Having and how emotions. how diabolical is this motherfucker? Like, as a kid, he's like, yo, basically his family annoyed him to the point that he killed them. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I'm glad, like, yeah, my, I'm glad we didn't my skip that. My parents annoy me, but let's not get crazy now. Yeah, you know? so there was no there was no demon in that no. house that killed everyone, Victor Creel's mm-hmm. family. It was this guy as a young child who was just like, uh, you know, fuck these people, I'm, out. I'm annoyed. I mean, he's sitting at the dinner table and yeets his mom into the air and crushes her. And he's sitting there just eating a cheeseburger like it's nothing. Like, yeah, I'm good. You know, I have seconds. He what? started with animals first. Yeah, he started, he practiced with animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. he got more powerful and learned, has an obsession with spiders, which is probably mm-hmm. why him and the Mind Flayer became buddies, because Mind Flayer looks like a giant spider to some extent. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, this show is fucking amazing. Yeah. This this season was incredible. Well, welcome back, Fat Samurai Guy. I'm yeah. back. I'm back in the fold, and I'm glad I returned because I uh, wasn't expecting to 
be uh, even more pleasantly surprised with this season. Just completely kicked ass, took names, gave uh, gave the villain a, a, an identity, a face, and a personality, and motives. That's a lot yes. of good shit right there, dude. Did you did now? Did you tell? Did you tell uh, Lady? Still, uh, hashtag uh, recast the Joker for the next Batman movie. Just yes. <laughs> yep. Where we got uh, Jamie Campbell Bauer. Got to put him in the chat. Name. Put it in the chat, bro. Yeah, Jamie. <laughs> hold on, let me put it here. Put it in the chat, guys. Share it. Jamie Campbell <laughs> Bauer. There it is. There it is. Now, guys. did you did you tell Lady Fablet how good the season was? I know you didn't give her details, but you tell her, hey, honey, you got to watch this, like t- that kind of I stuff. I told her it was. I told her it was really good. It's gonna be harder to convince her to jump on the bandwagon, but really? she did show. Well, yeah, because she's if if I was checked out, she was even more checked out than I was. <laughs> but I did tell her a few things that not too much spoilers. And she was doing research on her phone. So that's 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 a shot. She showed some at least that much interest. Yeah, you gotta you gotta so, try and you gotta try and give her the, you know. Maybe before uh season four the, the rest comes out. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll, it. We'll, I'll try to get her to watch by then, and then we could just finish it together. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, knowing her, dude, she's just she's just as bad as you, Rob. She's gonna be like, "Oh, I know who that guy is. I know what's going on." Yeah, <laughs> she's just yeah. as bad as you, dude. Like yeah, Samurai guy, Samurai guy takes a while for me to figure out twists. But I think like, I think um I think their key I think their motivation was to get you to be enthralled by the story itself i don't think i don't think their aim was to really even though it was a twist for a lot of people i don't think that was their purpose i think their purpose was for you to somewhat figure it out and then just just enjoy because the story how it all came together was just great you know knowing that it was him all along and that he's not a lab rat he's so you know are there other people that are are originally powerful like he is and not necessarily made in the lab uh, those sorts of things. So was, yeah, man. Was Modine aware of him? Yeah, yeah. Modine's the one that discovered him. Okay. So okay. when he killed his parents, um, nobody really knew that it was him. Right. Um, and and Matthew Modine basically like, I don't know, almost like adopted him because he okay. discovered that he he had these powers. And that's I think. When he, more, I think, I think um, the question was, did he? think he was going to turn like that i expect? think i think he knew that he he couldn't control him so i think they allude to this in the show uh indirectly but okay. basically um uh, matthew modine's got dr was it barrett barner something with a b yeah you yeah, just yeah. go catch it again um but anyway i think he knew mm-hmm. that he he knew he couldn't control him which is why he gave him that that little bomb in his neck and that's what kept oh, him in check oh there it is okay yeah okay, okay. that's what kept him in check so gotcha there it is and that's why okay. um vecna manipulated 11 and got closer to her basically brenner thank you Zade. um basically uh m- manipulated 11 into trusting him to the point that she got rid of the bomb and right. that's what unleashed. And then he just went to he went to town on the whole lab. He killed everybody. I mean, he just wrecked the shit out of. I mean, I just love I love Eleven in the closet, and all you hear is the screams, and him walking around. Just you don't even see what he's doing. You just yeah. hear chaos, and you. Hear, I mean, that's just it's good shit, bro. How about when he told her when when she came back too soon? And he was kind of upset that he she got to see the carnage. So he's like, I thought I told you to wait. Yeah. <laughs> he was tight. He was like, bitch, I didn't want you to see this. Yeah, yeah. Do you think and, he, at the time, actually did care for her? Like He wanted her with him. Okay. He did. Uh, I don't, I, I, it's not to say that he cared for her more so than he cared to have her by his side as for her powers. Right. Because right, he knew right, that right. she he, he was she was like his I think he knew that she's more powerful than him. Yeah. Um I think he sensed that more than uh Dr. Brenner did and that's why he wanted her by his side. Um Kelly brought him that this uh, thing in his neck weakened yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I was I trying to remember 
what it was. I, I don't think it was a, like an inhibitor. I think it was a bomb, though. Like, that's what he said, but I think he told her that for sympathy. I think if he told her it was a bomb, right. she would know, wait a minute, why do you need a bomb in your right. neck? What, what kind of shit are you up to? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> right, so, right, um, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, great. Just for the overall phenomenal season, man. I'm glad I'm back watching. Uh, I can't wait for the next couple of episodes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Overall, phenomenal. I recommend it. So if those oh, of you that are watching right now, if you pull the samurai guy and said, fuck this, <laughs> come on back. Yeah. Trust it. Trust us. Come yep. on back. And just to mention another better than if, ever now. If it was just an inhibitor, he would have just taken it out himself. Right. So that's how you know right. it was a bomb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, uh, man, yeah. this was a blast. I, I gotta, I hate to wrap it up, but I gotta do something a little no, bit. No, no, I hear you. It's all good. Actually, I can just announce it. Hey, if you guys want to come back and hang out with Samurai Guy at 7 30, uh, me, Joe Valley from Media Glitch, and Radical Reggie are going to be hanging out. We're going to do a trailer reaction to the newest Resident Evil series trailer that just dropped. So, uh, see you guys back here at 7 30 if you guys are, uh, have nothing to do and you want to hang out a little longer. A little late tonight. It's a late day. But yeah, Rob, whoo, thank you, my friend. No, thank, thank you. you. I got to do this to Rob. I got to do this to Rob for uh, getting my butt <laughs> back in gear. And uh, now Samurai go watch guy Night Sky. Now watch Night Sky. <laughs> I'm trying to get people to watch the show and nobody, nobody's watching it. It's like, what the fuck? This is such a great show and every, no one's watching it. Uh, yeah, go watch Night Sky. That's the next one you should watch. That's and I'll continue one. to watch The Warrior. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Keep me posting on that. All right, guys. Uh, y'all know what you need to do. If you're not subscribed to Rob from Entertainment Talk Nation, y'all know what you need to do. The information is in the description box below, son. And <laughs> if you're new here, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the old Samurai guy as well. But I'll see you guys back here at 730. Whoever wants to hang out on late night, late night, Tuesday night. Why am I talking like Nick Nolte? I don't know. All right, guys. <laughs> take it easy. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Peace out.